Hello and welcome to this online video presentation of our recent research into Integrated Music Education or IME. My name is Daniel Johnson and I teach at the University of North Carolina Wilmington in the United States. Together with my colleagues, we are glad to present this video for the practice and research in Integrated Music Education or PRIME as a part of ISME. Hi, my name is Kristen Harney and I teach at Montana State University in the US. It's good to be with you today. Hi, I'm Amaret Langwell, and I'm the coordinator of music education at Northern Michigan University in the US, and it's great to be here. So we'll begin our presentation by sharing the slides here. Our study, entitled Why Integrate Music in Elementary Classrooms, is an examination of both the perspectives and practices of two groups of teachers, specialist music teachers and general non-music teachers. Our presentation is unique in that it allowed us to examine integrated music education from two ways, by perspective and practice, and by type of teacher. As displayed here, we aim to explore music and classroom teachers' perceptions of IME and to examine their observed instructional practices in terms of instructional quality. So we asked, what are participants' perceptions about IME and how do their observed instructional practices demonstrate instructional quality in terms of disciplinary and interdisciplinary instruction? So before summarizing the related literature, here's a little background that indicates our interest in this topic. As shown here, Hallmark questioned the assumption that music should be taught as a standalone or separate subject, and highlighted the wide disparity between high quality arts education and its actual practice in schools. So we wanted to examine both of these in terms of music and non-music teachers. For decades, Innovative educators have designed interdisciplinary curricula which conceptually and practically integrate arts and non-art subjects, therefore addressing standards in multiple disciplines. From the related literature, we defined integrated music education as involving collaborative and experiential instruction designed to address both music and non-music standards. This type of pedagogy also involves multimodal and interactive teaching presentations. Furthermore, this connects with the standard that practically links music and other subjects by understanding societal, cultural, and historical contexts. Music and arts methods are common components in teacher education curricula, and they routinely play an important part in pre-service elementary education majors' teacher licenses. As an extension of the arts methods courses, integrated music education offers interdisciplinary ways to foster creative and critical thinking skills to promote abstract reasoning and to involve students in multi-sensory and multimodal activities. In early research on this um, topic, Bresler described four different levels of integration as subservient, affective, social, and co-equal. The least involved is subservient, describes situations where the arts serve other disciplines. Affective integration indicates that teachers use the arts to affect mood or inspire creativity. When the arts serve a social function, they manage classroom behaviors and other social integration. Finally, co-equal integration signifies that the teacher equally values and recognizes understanding both in the arts and in the non-art subject. Educators using integrated arts curricula have documented enhanced student understandings and engagement, including significant gains in achievement, attitude, attendance, and behavior. The primary advantage for music and grade level teachers includes enhancing classroom learning environments, supporting student achievement, encouraging creativity, and also facilitating a collaborative curricular planning. Some literature uh, reporting the challenges to IME suggests that although music and grade level teachers were engaged in the planning, music integration was frequently limited and sometimes superficial. Perhaps these shortcomings arise because of these persistent needs. Those needs include a lack of sufficient training for both grade level and art specialist teachers, a lack of administrator support, and a lack of time. With that introduction and background, we turn to the methodology that we used for our project. We chose to use a multiple case study design where three teachers in a single school setting defined each case. Each case consisted of a kindergarten through fifth grade music teacher, 
a kindergarten to second grade classroom teacher and a grade three through five classroom teacher. We conducted a total of eight interviews and eight observations, one with each classroom teacher and then two with each music teacher. Our data set included participant interviews, classroom observations, and instructional materials such as lesson plans. The interviews were semi-structured and were conducted and transcribed by the researchers. We analyzed the data sets inductively and deductively, searching for themes within each case and across cases. Um, single case analysis began with open coding and reading complete sets of data for each interview participant. We then applied focused coding to lay the groundwork for our cross case analysis by taking note of recurring themes. We conducted um, the cross case analysis in a similar manner to the single case analysis. Further, we allowed um, codes to emerge during data collection and analysis, quoting participants' own words to maintain their uniqueness. All data was in, uh, independently analyzed by each researcher before coming together for collective agreement. Trustworthiness was ensured through data collection, peer review, and participant checks. After consulting a number of widely used teaching standards and other uh, measures of instructional quality, we designed an observational framework to focus on the two dimensions most relevant to our study, disciplinary and interdisciplinary instruction. We then applied Bresler's levels of arts integration, um, subservient, effective, social, and co-equal to the interdisciplinary dimension. To judge each dimension, we used four ratings, emerging, developing, proficient, and exemplary. Prior to beginning the data analysis, we completed a preliminary analysis of one classroom video together to ensure inter-rated reliability using this particular observation framework. We then analyzed all of the remaining data independently and then collectively agreed on our final ratings for each observation. I'm gonna talk about the findings. Following our analysis of interview and observation data, five findings emerged that described integrated music education from the perspectives and practices of the six educators. How participants defined integrated music, music education, benefits of IME, factors that supported and hindered its practice, and needs for the continuation and expansion of IME. When asked to define integrated music education, participants' responses indicated both an inexact use of terminology and a range of integration, which we aligned with Bressler's four levels of arts integration. Many teachers noted ways that music served other disciplines, aligning with Bressler's subservient level. We also identified definitions that fit Bressler's affective, social, and co-equal levels. Participants articulated the benefits of IME in two main categories, academic and non-academic. When describing cross-curricular learning, grade level teachers often described connections between music and other disciplines such as reading or math and highlighted how music supported their students' learning. In some cases, participants described connections that highlighted student learning in both subjects. Teachers also commented about different learning styles, revealing that they value differentiated instruction through the arts. Every participant noted non-academic benefits of music integration, and these included enhancing student engagement and interest, managing student behaviors, and promoting various social life and life skills. Tangible and behavioral supports for IME emerged from the interview data as well. These supports articulate measures that enable music and grade level teachers to practice and sustain IME in their classrooms. Tangible supports included enrichment in the form of artists in residence, professional development in IME, and participants also described their own attitudes, skills, and communications about IME as important behavioral supports. Participants reported various challenges they encountered in their experiences with IME. The most predominant obstacle was an imbalance in expectations among colleagues. Most commonly, participants perceived music teachers as more responsible for integrating content than grade level teachers. Knowing what to teach in terms of standards was a second obstacle. While every teacher expressed familiarity with the standards in their own content areas, they differed in their knowledge of the standards of other disciplines. 
Third, we identified a lack of formalized assessment as a weakness in IME teaching practices, with teachers generally assessing informally and only within their content area. The fourth obstacle was participants' perceived lack of efficacy to integrate music across the curriculum, although the music teachers rated their comfort and ability higher than the grade level teachers. Our final theme focused on structures needed for IME instruction. We defined these needs as contributions the school or district could supply to enhance IME and possibly address obstacles to IME. The three specific supports that we identified were resource material, time for planning, instruction, and collaboration, and professional development in IME. Implications for pre-service and in-service teacher education include aligning definitions with practice, enhancing teacher collaboration, and developing focused professional development to address the challenges of IME, while simultaneously recognizing opportunities for both elementary music and grade level teachers. One direction for future research includes investigating student achievement and engagement as functions of interdisciplinary instruction. By considering student responses to IME pedagogy, we may learn more about its potential impact. Additionally, we plan to replicate this study at the middle school level, learning more about differences and simul similarities by age and grade levels will assist us in developing a more complete understanding of IME. Thank you for your attention to this video presentation. We look forward to discussing our research project with you and answering any questions you may have.